Dear friends, this is a promotional video for rlrcpsolvers.com. Every week, Robbie and I discuss a case. Then, after we discuss the case, we reflect on it and we create teaching figures with accompanying videos. So this was a case which I presented to Robbie. He was completely blind to the case beforehand, and it ended up being infectious mononucleosis secondary to Epstein-Barr virus. So in this teaching video, we discuss an approach to infectious mononucleosis. On the website, there's an accompanying figure. Subscribe to rlrcpsolvers.com. Welcome back, clinical problem solvers. Today, we're gonna to discuss infectious mononucleosis. Before I helped take care of a friend during the holiday break who ultimately had infectious mononucleosis, I used to think infectious mononucleosis equals EBV, but that was an error. So stay tuned for when you should suspect infectious mononucleosis, what are the various causes of infectious mononucleosis, and what might mimic infectious mononucleosis. You see, my friend texted me that he was having extreme fatigue, fever, and night sweats, with a pharyngitis. And by the end of this, you'll know um, exactly how you should approach this problem. So step one, when should you suspect it? So in anyone, let me get my wand, in anyone who has fever, fatigue, adenopathy, and pharyngitis, that's when you should suspect infectious mononucleosis. And remember, infectious mononucleosis is the start of the journey because there's different causes of infectious mononucleosis. And whenever you're forming a differential diagnosis, it's always good to think about the mimickers. But here, even in the symptoms, it's good to know which symptoms are most frequently present. In one study of 500 patients with infectious mononucleosis, all 500 of them had fatigue and adenopathy in the head and neck region. That's cervical and auricular. All of them. And even the adenopathy, it's more likely to be posterior and more likely to be tender, but you can certainly have anterior cervical lymphadenopathy. So as you're learning different illnesses in medicine, just learn at the frequency of symptoms in the specific illness. The fever was pr pr present in over 95% of patients in that study, and many of them had pharyngitis. My friend said fatigue was his main issue as well as a lymph node. So when you have these four findings, frame your patient as infectious mononucleosis. There are a few lab findings that will also help support that hypothesis. And that includes abnormal lymphocytes. Abnormal lymphocytes in two ways. One is an abnormally elevated lymphocyte count so you have more than 50% of your diff being lymphocytes, and atypical lymphocytes. So if you look at that smear, those lymphocytes, they just don't look like normal lymphocytes. They have more cytoplasm, for example. So lymphocytes are a tremendous clue to this clinical syndrome of infectious mononucleosis. And then the other lab finding is abnormal liver chemistry tests. Elevations in ASC and ALT are also a clue. So. Your patient tells you they have fatigue, they have fever, they have adenopathy, pharyngitis. You gotta frame them as infectious mononucleosis, get those labs. Most likely they'll have lymphocytosis or atypical lymphocytes. And many times they have abnormal liver chemistry tests in the form of elevated ASC and ALT. So now my friend who had the fatigue, had the fever, had the pharyngitis and had the lymph node, I should have said, okay, this is infectious mononucleosis but EBV is not the only cause. Let's talk about the mimickers and then we'll jump back to what causes this clinical syndrome. The mimickers of infectious mononucleosis really is in two buckets. One is penicillin sensitive causes of bacterial pharyngitis. So penicillin sensitive causes of bacterial pharyngitis. In fact, the first diagnosis I thought of my friend was what would be the first diagnosis you would think in the friend who's texting you with the complaint of pharyngitis and fever? It was strep throat, specifically group A strep. 
There are other bacteria, like other variants of strep, like group G strep, uh, but even other bacteria like Fusobacterium and, um, yeah, Fusobacterium. And there's one that I'm going to mispronounce, but it's in the figure below, Arachnobacterium. But the thing to know is all of these are penicillin sensitive. The other mimickers, the other category of mimickers includes lymphoma and drugs. Lymphoma and drugs. One thing is that lymphoma doesn't commonly present with pharyngitis. It's not its signature, but it can. And there are drugs, specifically anticonvulsants, that can give you this clinical syndrome. So fever, fatigue, adenopathy, pharyngitis. Oh, my, I think my patient has infectious mononucleosis. The mimickers, could this be group A strep or another bacterial bacteria that's sensitive to penicillin causing pharyngitis or lymphoma or drugs like anticonvulsants? Once you are here at infectious mononucleosis and you've ruled out group A strep, you did a rapid strep or culture, or the patient is not getting better, that's another clue that you're not dealing with a bacterial pharyngitis. Assuming that bacterial pharyngitis hasn't caused the complication, the patient's not getting better. 90% of the time, if you say EBV, you're right. So that's EBV positive infectious mononucleosis. But 10% of the time, it's not due to EBV. You have to think about EBV's cousins, which includes HIV and CMV. Now, if you know the illness script for these, you can even prioritize amongst those causes. For example, HIV may have a rash. EBV is less likely to have a rash unless the patient's exposed to a penicillin antibiotic there's this transient hypersensitivity reaction that occurs in these patients. And in fact, my friend received amoxicillin thinking that it was bacterial pharyngitis. Then a few days later, he developed this diffuse macular and papular rash. But if you don't have antibiotic exposure and the patient has a rash with infectious mononucleosis, you have to be concerned for HIV. But even without the rash, it's still in the differential diagnosis, so it, it should be ruled out. Another thing that's in the different differential diagnosis is CMV, but CMV doesn't really cause a severe pharyngitis, um, though it can lead to the atypical lymphocytes and the lymphocytosis that we see in infectious mononucleosis. The last one to think about is toxoplasma, but toxoplasma doesn't usually cause a pharyngitis or abnormal liver chemistry tests. So you can quickly make you can quickly prioritize this this list once you have infectious mononucleosis. My friend actually had an HIV scent that was negative and had CMV scent that was negative. So to summarize, actually I'm gonna ask some questions of you. I'm gonna block here. Okay, what are the four symptoms that should make you think of infectious mononucleosis and which of those two are almost always present? When you get labs, what are the labs that you might see? What mimics infectious mononucleosis? Let's say you're actually dealing with infectious mononucleosis. What's the number one cause? What are the other two causes and how might you prioritize that list?